know, first and foremost, we always tried to stretch ourselves against the best competition. You know, historically, we've gone into Europe, so we've, we've been to Lithuania, we played in the Sabonis Cup. We're the only English club team to ever play in the EuroLeague Junior Tournament. Um, when we hosted that a few years ago, we've been to Spain, we've been to it, uh, France. So we like to travel, play against international teams, which was good for us. So first and foremost, I thought the competition level would be great for us. I thought the exposure for our, our players as individuals um, would be a major thing as well. The exit route for, for most of the guys we have at the moment is to go to the States. That's the route that they want to take. Um, that's the, you know, the possible route with the economic climate as well. So we thought that was a really good idea in terms of trying to get them exposure to college coaches. Um, and then the profile of the tournament for our brand, for our name as well. We thought it'd be fantastic to get, um, you know, to get people to know about who we are and what we do and how we're trying to help kids move on and, and, and develop players. So, yeah, and I think it achieved all of, all of those aims. You know, I knew it was a, a tournament. I didn't know the uh, the scale of it, you know. So I like Googled it and that, and that like, Frank was talking to us, Lowe was talking to us. And we just realized how big, how big a deal it was. And they told us one of the biggest high school tournaments. And the schools that go there, like Mount Verde, you know, and Whitney Young, we realized it was a, a big place to play at. Going into a big tournament like this, everyone wants to perform, knowing that there's going to be lots of coaches there and there's going to be a chance for us to perform at a, perform on a big platform. Everyone knew that working hard from the beginning, um, getting extra reps up was going to help benefit us in the long run. So I think that, that kind of stu stuck with us from the beginning. There's always, um, there's always that, that thought really, because you're going into the unknown. So I was, I'm happy with the team we have, our talent level and everything. I thought we have a great team, but obviously, you know, we, we've never been to high school. We've never been to a high school tournament in America. We've never played American high school teams before. So there's the unknown of how we would compare to them. Um, the style of play was drastically different. We've talked about that. You know, since we've returned, just the adjustment factor in there. Also, the atmosphere we knew going in was going to be a big, big difference to what our guys were used to. Um, but I don't think it was a fear of of losing. Um, that was the problem. I just wanted to make sure, you know, we justified the talent level that we had to our individuals. We wanted them to make sure people were able to see that they're good players and they could go on and succeed in that level and showcase their skills personally. shows the difference between, um, between England and America in terms of standard of like uh, facilities and that. You know, because we, we went through the neighbourhood to get there and like, I don't want to sound like, horrible, but it wasn't the greatest of neighbourhoods to drive through and the school looked like the great, greatest of schools. But, you know, you step on the court and you realise there's basketball lines, volleyball lines, that's it. The floor's been polished that morning, the rings look like well kept, the nets are well kept. Everything is well kept, even though it's not in the greatest of schools. I think that shows a difference of like the priority of sports. The three point line is pushed in. Okay. Right, so that's one thing we have to get used to. Also, our spacing will be. The first thing we did in practice was Coach Frank had us, you know, was had us all sat down and explained to us the differences between uh, basketball here and basketball in the states. Like the rules, obviously, there's no shot clock. Uh, just the fact that players can call timeouts, things like that. It meant that you know we had to make an adjustment to our game instead of playing so high and fast paced that we do, you know, having to rush to call sets and things. We had all the time in the world. We had to be prepared to play defense for as long as possible. So in practice, we sort of had to adjust our practices so we would play without a shot clock and we would play with these rules in a smaller court, obviously.
know, it looks like start with the work for us. How are you liking Miami so far? It's hot. It's real hot. Really hot. While, while we were on the 10 day trip, we didn't want it just to be about basketball. You know, again, we wanted it to be a cultural experience as well for the players. So what we did, the, one of the first days we were there, uh, we took everyone to the Miami Heat game. A friend of mine that works there with the Heat got us some tickets and uh, it, it, was, it was great. You know, the guys got a great experience with it. They got to watch an NBA game, you know, and uh, a lot of them probably might, ne might never have that experience. And uh, it was great for the guys. Then we went, you know, to the malls. They did some shopping. You know, we again we went out to the schools as well too. They got to visit all the different universities. You know, it was it was a great all-around experience. The first school we went to was FAU, Division One school in Florida, and like the first reaction was, wow. The, the, the sheer size of the place, man. You start you're, you're on a road and you ask coach where you are. It's like we're on campus. You're driving around like a three-lane road in the middle of their campus and. Um, you know, we got to the gym, it's like a five, six thousand seat of gym, and the guy that was taking us around, the assistant coach, I think, was complaining that it was small. And we got just like, yeah, all right, it's small. Um, you know, went to the football stadium, 45, 50,000 seat or something like that, complaining and then saying, oh, it's brand new, but it, but it is kind of small. You know, and, and, it, and it put into perspective like the level of, the level of, you know, Division One basketball, especially when that school's. I think it's a mid major. Mid major, yes, yeah, a mid major school. I mean, it just makes me think like, what are even better schools like? Um, it was an amazing facility. The court was huge. Uh, some, like the amount of people that that court must be able to fit in. The gym there was about there was a huge workout gym, much bigger than uh, like we have here. Just the uh, changing room, everything was personalised. It was just an amazing facility. The campus was really nice as well. I've never seen any colleges out there before, so going out there just to see what it's like, just to see the college and the difference um, to the amount of effort they put in basketball over there and how much they care about it and how much everyone appreciates basketball over there really motivated me to want to go over there and play basketball in the future. The tours or the, the visits were, fa were fantastic. Um, we had a good relationship with Florida Atlantic already. They'd been over to watch our guys play, so they're, you know, they've been looking at some of our players. So for them, they wanted us to visit the campus because um, they, it gives them a chance to speak to players or look at our players even more. Um, and, and we made the decision we wanted to visit schools of different levels because obviously we have players of different levels. Um, and I think there's a stigma for kids here in England to say, oh, I want to go to an NCAA Division I school. Well, actually, there's a lot more to college basketball in America than NCAA Division I. Um, the top of the top, the cream is an NCAA Division I player for sure, but then outside of that, college basketball in America is such a big business that I wanted our players to kind of see the environment, the lifestyle they may be able to get, even if they're not able to achieve a Division I scholarship or go to a school like Florida Atlantic that's in Conference USA, um, we thought it was a great, great trip. So we, again, Barry had looked at some of our players in the past. Um, so we, we went to visit them, being a Division II school. Another great campus, you know, closer to my, the city of Miami than, than Florida Atlantic. A really lovely location for anybody wishing to go to school. And then Palm Beach State, obviously, David Akibo, who was with us last year, is there. So it was a great opportunity, what we thought, to go and see him practice, despite the fact he was injured, so he didn't. But we thought we'd go and get to see him, meet the coaches there, cement the relationship a bit more with Palm Beach, who already had one of our guys, and, and sort of show, show the players what junior college can offer. Um, and then also, you know, hopefully kind of show them one of our own within the setting, um, you know, of, of college basketball. So I, I thought that that was a, a great, factor in our trip, the fact that we got to visit the different levels rather than just Division 1 because you know, if we're being realistic, the number of English players total, not just players at Barking Abbey, uh, going to be able to go to a Division 1 school is, is slim, you know, you're not talking 10 guys a year are going to be able to sign Division 1 scholarships, so, you know, we've got guys in, in our team which I think will make great NCAA Division 2 players or would, would benefit from time at junior college and we wanted to show them or have them excited about that possible route as well. Um, we're going to be heading towards uh, Elevate Academy. It's uh, Gannon Baker's Academy and uh, we tip off with them here at 6pm. And what are your hopes for the game, what are your expectations going in? Um, 
I just hope we play well, we play together, work on the things we've been doing in practice, and I think if we, if we cover those, I think we'll, we'll come out with a win. As a team, we knew that the team was going to be good, but we didn't know how good they were going to be. I think I knew, from when they told us, I think I knew, like, you know, they could be a lot more athletic than us, could be a lot longer than us, a lot quicker than the lane, you know, things like that. But I don't think the whole team realised. Everyone thought, oh, yeah, 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 of course, it's going to be like that, but then not to the first game, I don't think they realised what it actually was like. Uh, first game didn't play out as it did in my head. I knew that the first game was going to be a struggle more than anything um, because of the style of play of, of American teams, especially on, on the defensive end. I mean, I played college basketball in America and, and for me that was the major difference. The defence compared to how we face defence and play defence here in England. Uh, on the first possession when they tried to dunk it on us, I was just like, wow. like. This is, this is what America's going to be like, this is how athletic they are, they're, this is how hyped everyone is, this is, this is, what's gonna, this is what the whole tournament's going to be like. They're, they're just in your face, they're, they're not, they, they don't respect you and they want to show you that, you know, that you're nothing, so they'll embarrass you. They won't just, people in this country will just sit there and just let you do what you want, but here they're just going to make you look like you're an idiot and you can't play. They rushed all over us, they were very aggressive and our guys were, were quite shell-shocked by that. It was something they hadn't really seen before, so I, I expected it to kind of go how, how it did. And everyone knew, knew what it was going to be like, like expected something like that. But I think to actually get on the floor and play with people like that was a lot different. And when they realised, damn, like, I'm quick in England, I'm normal here, you know, or this or that, I think it, it did shock a few people and that first half was very... It was an eye open, I think, for most guys in the team. I didn't realise it took quite a while to sink in from. We, uh, we come off the floor, I can't remember the score, but we were down, quite a big margin I think. And um, we went and sat in the weights room, which is our changing room, and, uh, and we were all pretty quiet for, for a good like, two, three, four minutes. You know, it feels like a lot longer than that. And then the coaches eventually walked in and started talking, but you know, I think the guys realised that, that that point was that was where it started for us, you know. Guys, like, we knew it was going to be like this. Right? First half. New style of basketball for you guys. Right? More aggressive, right? After the first half, our, our nerves sort of went down, kind of settled in, and we sort of realised like they weren't that much better than us. You know, once we got the ball past half court, we could see their zone they were running it wasn't even that great. There was a lot of open openings, and you know, I think it was in the third quarter we got back, we got it back to a single digit game. So I mean, that was sort of a big confidence for us because it was a big confidence boost for us because like we knew we knew we were 
stair there about so you can keep taking it. Um, from a coaching perspective, I, I wasn't disappointed with losing the first game because I thought if we'd gone and won that game, then mentally, I don't know how our players would have would have reacted to that. Whether they would have got a little bit too confident, whether it would have been, uh, you know, whether they wouldn't have focused themselves then for the rest of the trip. So, you know, from a from a development point of view, a loss in the opening game wasn't really a disappointment to me. The prep team was older, stronger and even better than the high school team but I remember everyone was just at the beginning like our team talk at the beginning was just solely focused on not starting the game like we started the first one. Yesterday, now we throw our punches to them. Let's go for this to show them how we do it. Abby on three. One, two, three, hard hit! Yeah. I think our focus was, you know, one, to play our, our basketball, not to challenge them at what they're good at, not to play their style, and um, also, you know, be aware of the different rules. Second game, uh, more than any of the others, I think highlighted the differences in rules between the, 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 start, the rules that the high school teams in Florida play with and, and we play with. You know, they didn't take a shot for the first three minutes of the game. It, it, was, it was a very different scenario for our guys, and I think... You know, shots that we took, which would be good shots here in Europe, um, were bad shots in that scenario. We, we'd have a one-on-one -on -one in transition. I remember a couple of times we'd have it, we'd take, take it to the basket strong in transition, we missed. And usually we'd say, okay, good shot, you know, high percentage shot. Well, actually, in that style of play, you're probably better to, to bring it out, to set it up, to, to use some time to get a higher percentage, you know, wide open shot. Because you can, because there's no shot clock. I think they like they had like a swagger about themselves that they knew that oh we were just some English guys and we couldn't play and I think we had that fight to try and show that we could. Oh, you can't draw anything better than that. But it's that 
Giving up, if you see guys getting frustrated, if you see guys with bad body language, straight away, that's a cross next to your name. You'll see it. What's going to separate you from the other teams that we're playing? Why are you going to get a scholarship when other people aren't? Now, if your attitude, if your body language, if your effort isn't there, then they'll get somebody who might be as roughly the same as you, but they have that because that's what they can work with. Because that's what they can work with. Alright, so that's what we go to get guys. We can't get down on ourselves. We can be frustrated a little, we can be more motivated, but we can't get down on ourselves as to the way we're playing. Alright? Because what matters comes next. If we go in low in confidence, if we go in feeling down, then that's gonna make us play even worse. These are just warm-up games for us. The real stuff starts after two more practices. That's when it counts. Right? This is just our adjustment. This is just our adjustment here. What are your thoughts on today's game? Uh, played well. We just on defense, we should have just kept like keep going, like not give up. We gave up sooner because of the no shot clock. And didn't like, keep that consistency. What have been the biggest adjustments to the American game? Uh, the pace. Everyone, everyone's on it like that all the time. It's quick. Very quick. We make great adjustments from the first game. We got better. Um, I, was, I was disappointed to lose that game. I thought on talent level we were pretty similar. We, we probably could have won. Um, but we got undone just not realising or not adjusting well enough to that style of play. I think if it was any other situation like in season or post season or whenever, um, we'd be a lot, a lot heavier on ourselves, you know, a lot harder on ourselves about personal performances and that. But I think because of the tournament coming up in a couple of days time and the coach is telling us, look, 
forget about this, on to the next thing. We, we just did that, you know, I don't, don't think it really affected us, whether that be a good thing or a bad thing. I don't think that really got to us mentally. You know, we're at the midway point now on the way to Fort Myers, so it's almost like, uh, you know, the holiday part of the trip is over. We've, we've done the tours, we've had a great opportunity to look around, the guys have had a great cultural trip and experience. Uh, the first two games are just getting us used to that level, and now it's all about the, the money, the business of, of playing well in front of a packed crowd with college coaches, with a pressure environment, with the different rules, with the different um, style of play, and that's what we talked about at the end of the day. You know, this first part of the trip is all about getting us ready for City of the Marks. And hopefully, you know, we've done that. Hopefully they've, they've learned enough through these two days, or these, these two games, sorry. But it's, it's going to be tough because it's, you know, it's a different style of game. So as a team, we're going to have to uh, really make adjustments on the fly and learn how to play this type of basketball. Come this way. We went to Fort Myers, I think. Not so much off the court, but on the court, everything was a lot more serious. You know, in practice, it was a lot more focused, you know, and a lot more, like, playing a lot harder. Just so we're ready for what, what was to come in the tournament. Friday, we play at 6.30, play against Wichita Sunrise Christian, and uh, we're going to go in and get some shots up, get the guys loose, go through some, uh, some of the different sets that uh, Wichita runs, and how we'll defend it. And uh, what, what, your, what your focus is on the game tonight? Um, what are the keys for the game? <laughs> we kind of talked about what the keys will be. Last night, um, got to rebound the ball well, play together, play through adversity. Uh, just really stick together. The day of the first game, whole game day, I remember waking up and just really, that's all I was thinking about before I went to sleep. I, you know, I think I can speak for everyone. Everyone was a little nervous and anxious and for the first game, not, you know, just wanting to make a good impression for coaches, wanting to, you know, do everyone back home proud.
what we need to do in order to have success in this game. So really just start to think about that. Think about what you guys promised each other as a team to do out there. Remember, there's going to be adversity, all right? There's going to be stuff that's going to go up and down. What are you guys going to do to stay together, to stay together as a group, as a team, to fight through it? Think about this. Lloyd, anything? No. All right, bring it in, guys. Let's go. This is what you've been waiting for, guys. Abby on three. One, two, three. Abby! Abby. There was nerves, you know? Like, personally, I was very nervous. Just because I knew, I knew what to expect with a crowd, you know, you know, in that situation before. And that, and um, I think the change room as well, the wait we had to do before the game, it was like a five minute wait while the game finished, and we had to sit and wait to be asked into the court. You know, everyone's mind's racing, adrenaline's pumping, you, you just, yeah, the nerves were building the whole day. Going in, it was, uh, it was, it was interesting because obviously Frank is, is, an, is American and culturally has, has a different upbringing to us. So we were in the hotel the day of the game and he was very alarmed that, um, you know, to an American, we were very quiet, we were very subdued um, and he was concerned about this. I, and I kind of said to him, no, actually, I think this is just our, our Britishness, our English mentality that the players are focused. Uh, they were very focused, they were very quiet during the day. I think they had a sense of nerves. We had gone to the tournament the day before, seen the atmosphere, um, but they knew how important the games were, you know, how that they would be under the spotlight um, on the floor. So I, I think they, they had a sense of the size of, of the task in front of them. Um, we knew Wichita were a, a great team. Obviously, they were ranked number six in, in America. And, and that's not an easy task by any stretch of the imagination. That a number of guys, that, you know, that had a lot of Division One signees, that, Anyone that's going to Michigan State um, is is a great player. So we knew that they had, a, you know, the guard that was going to Michigan State as well. So we were prepared in that sense. But you you never know with with junior basketball how players are going to react. Um, uh, and our guys did a good job. I thought they re they really did uh, handle themselves. They prepared mentally. They prepared physically, and we were ready to play. All right, guys. We've been waiting all. Beginning of school for this. Once we got in August, we kind of knew that we were going to be doing this. Right? We've always said that this is what we're looking for. This is what we're looking to do. Every day in practice, we're looking to get better. And not just individually, but as a team for this tournament. We're here now, finally. We've gotten better since the beginning of the year. We've grown, not just as individuals, but we've grown as a team. And that's going to be very important in this game. That team concept. That team unity. Working together for a common goal. That's what's going to get you the victory here tonight. That's the underdogs. You've got to get nasty and get out there and fight for this win. They are not going to give it to you. All right? Let's go, Adam. Welcome to go. Let's go. Come on. Hey. Today, guys, probably got a little bit of nerves. All right? It's to be expected, we've got to channel that. We've got to channel it to make it effective. We can't play scared. We've got to take away the fear. We've got to be fearless out there. All right? You've got to be fearless about what happens. Because this is an opportunity for you guys to make names for yourself and for us to make a name for our team. And I'm telling you, we go out there, we're worried about shit going wrong, it will go wrong. You've got to think, no, no, no. We're not looking at the, the, what might happen in the negative. We're looking at what might happen on a positive. All right? We go two for four from the field. Have we missed 50% of our shots? Or have we made 50% of our shots? All right? We've made 50% of our shots. That's the way we're going to look at it. All right? Fearless. Fearless. Good shots. A good shot in England or Sunrise Christian Academy here. All right? You take them, we stroke them, we knock them down. Let's go. Let's go. Win. One, two, three. Win. I was anxious. I just wanted to play well. I just, I think, um, I really wanted to play well, limit my mistakes, and try not to do anything wrong. Trying to be the best I could be to show everyone that I could play at this level, to show the coaches that I could play at this level. I think everyone kind of had the same mindset um, that they wanted to perform well in that game.
And I think I think the guys were a little bit nervous. They felt a little bit of pressure, especially coming into the city of the Palms tournament because uh, the first game, the crowd that's there. I mean, it was probably over 2,000 people that were there. You know, reporters, uh, agents. I think going into the first game against Wichita, uh, there was lots of things running through people's heads. I know there were a lot running through my head. Um, obviously, we were the only team from England over here, so I think there was a lot of talk around the arena about us. So let alone the guys who were playing against sixth rank in the country, there were a lot of people out there watching us as well to see what we could do. I felt a bit paranoid, but you know, I felt like everyone was looking because you know, you know, you're from London, England, and they're thinking. Who are these guys from England playing in this American, you know, prestigious tournament? But um, yeah, I think that wore off though, you know. Like, end of the day, you don't really think of the crowd when you're playing. You don't really feel them, you don't really know they're there. As soon as the ball went out, I think everyone relaxed, you know. Nobody could hit anything. It was, I think shooting-wise, as a team, that was probably the worst we've ever shot. No one shot really well, and that's probably down to nerves, just being at the new arena. Just uh, there's probably a lot of factors, but yeah, we just went on a huge scoring drought. I don't think we scored for the whole quarter until the last two minutes, so that definitely put us down. Even though at halftime we said, you know, we gotta do this, we gotta do that, 
we know what we've got to do to win this game, we can win this game. Um, they just come out and then we give them a chance and they were even better than the Elevate Academy, you know, and we give them a chance and we're down by, down by 20, you know, it's the way it goes sometimes. We got a little bit, a little bit complacent, and we realized like we should have kept that hype going up into the second half. And I think the other team had that like realization that they lose, like they they could potentially lose this, and they went to their like star players and their guard who just went off into the, in the second half and just killed us and we couldn't do anything. It was a lack of, we had good shots, we, they just weren't falling. And in the game is some, like, sometimes like that, that happens. And we just couldn't come up with the defensive stops, especially on Tum Tum to, to keep the game close. And unfortunately, I mean, that's the way it happens. Sometimes we tried numerous, numerous things. You know, Lloyd and myself talked about it, what we should do, different offense, defenses. But yeah, it was just, we had good looks. We just, we just couldn't convert. We can be a little disappointed with how we did, but we've got to be looking forward now. Yeah. We can't dwell on this and it affect our next performance in a negative way. It's got to affect it in a positive way. So we fight to get that comeback. Not, we just roll it over and say, oh, that was so bad in the last game. We can't dwell on that now. We've just got to look forward, we've just got to get better. Um, yeah, my thoughts were... Uh, of everything really we've got positive we've got negative we've got great stuff we've got, we've got bad stuff we, we played well defensively especially first half um, you know, really, really really well did all the little details we talked about in the build up we looked after the ball it was low scoring but their, their defence is obviously good as well um, and at half time we were really pleased you know the guys were a little deflated I thought them where they should be just because we hadn't, hadn't had success scoring um, but we had done well and then the second half we just hit that a real bad patch in the third quarter we struggled to contain their guard who is a very good player you know he kind of sparked them into life and then you know, we found it really difficult to just get going at all in the second half um, they made a couple of adjustments they took us out of the easy stuff that we got in the first half so yeah, you know, credit to them. It was, it was just a frustrating second half for us, which is a shame because people will look at the final score, think, you know, we got hammered. But in actual fact, against a team that's ranked number sixth in high school basketball in America, we were we were very competitive for a long stretch of the game. So, yeah, it's frustrating with that, but you know, a great experience for the guys, and it looks like it's been positive in terms of recruitment for individuals as well, which is the main reason for doing the trip really. It's about the, to, to improve for Sunday, we've got to learn from from today. Now we've got to get realise that we can't just play for 20 minutes, or 8 to 16 minutes, sorry here. We've got to play for the whole game. We can't get complacent. We've got to kind of take that nervousness, that, that anxiety that we had before the game that worked in our favour and, and use it for the whole game. Um, and also hopefully we can just be quite confident as well. There's you know, a thin line between confidence and arrogance, so we've got to make sure we're, we're not arrogant as to the opposition, thinking that they're not going to be good because we got within two and a half of, of uh, Sunrise. But at the same time, I think we can be confident. We can be confident that we're at this level. We can play at this level and we've got a great chance to win. So, 
Um, it'll be interesting to see. We're obviously a wounded animal, and, and Old Smart took a more of a pace in than we did, really, by all accounts, in, in their game against Brewster. So I think both teams need to bounce back and show that they have quality despite losing the other day. So they'll be hoping to do the same, just like we will. Uh, after, after the first game, you know, um, I, 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 I personally took it quite hard, you know, because we, 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 we didn't play amazing, you know, we lost in front of that many people. You come at the game and look at your phone on Twitter and that, and you've got these guys saying, you can't play against people in America, you can't do this, you know. And it, and it hurt, personally, quite a bit, you know. But um, after that, we had, we, had team, we had a team meeting that night, or the night after, and we split up into groups, into positions, and all that kind of stuff. And we, were, we said what we need to do as a team and what we've got to do individually. And um, I think it's focused everyone a lot more on the point, you know. You know, it was our final game of the of the whole trip. You know, we were just told, and we, all all that was going through our head was right. Let's just make a mark to the, to everyone. Let, let's let's make them remember Brack and Eddie. Last one, last one of the trip, boys. Last one. Guys, it's like like we said earlier. You know, we, we talk about everything that's gone before us is is over. The only thing we can control is the future. So. Disappointed with the past, have a chance to make up for it now. I think that um, we definitely, had, I feel, felt more comfortable playing. We wasn't as anxious. We knew that we knew what to expect. Now we knew we played three games already. We knew what to expect. We knew that we couldn't take our foot off the gas. We knew that we had to stay in the game for the whole game. So I think that going into the second game and playing the second game there was, a, there, was a, there was a big difference there was a big difference between that game and the first game and the, the way we played and the way we stuck to go yeah i felt a lot of pressure i mean i frank and lloyd had spoken to me before like this is a huge opportunity for you this could make or break you know your potential college career so obviously i'm just i'm just there like well you know if i have two bad games here no matter what anyone else says they can talk me up all they want then you know they've seen me and it was an opportunity for me to really make a name for myself in the states and you know in europe so just, you know, that's something I've been trying to do for a few years and I think that was, you know, I had a lot of pressure. Oldsmar Christian, we played in the second game. They're a tough team. They're scrappy. They get after it on defense. Uh, they work hard on the offensive end. If you make a mistake, they'll they'll make you pay for it. They like to press a bit. I mean, they're they're a good they're a good scrappy team. They've got about six or seven guys that have Division One offers. Two of the guys have already committed. I think one was to Oregon State. The other one's going to Duquesne. in the shots we shouldn't have. Some of the players weren't playing like how they should. to the glass every time and all of us were just doing this just standing like this trying to get rebounds you have to box somebody out and get a rebound 
They're killing us on the damn glass. One shot, two shots, three shots. They keep getting the ball out every damn time. I need someone that can rebound the ball. And our turnovers, too damn loose with the ball. They're up in the passing lanes, they're putting pressure on you, and we're tossing the ball away. If you want it, you got to fight for it. It's not going to come easy. We're not playing, you know, scrub teams. You're only going to get the win if we fight for it. So we've got to fight for rebounds. We've got to value the ball and look after it. Be strong with it. Not, oh, but I've got double team because no one's getting open for me. So what? All right? So what? Don't compound the mistake by making it worse. All right? The other thing, guys, not green on a pick and roll. All right? They got the ball's here. Their guy comes to set a screen here, and we're calling green. They're just, Black. they're getting right there. Black on the pick and roll. Black on the pick and roll. Okay, the only reason we go green is transition or horns. That's it. That's it. Or if the screen's being set here, it's not. It's not. Their screens are all on the three point line. Black. Okay, come on, guys. We talked about it before. Who wants it more? They want more. You guys want to win. You don't know how to work for a win. You don't know how to earn a win. These guys aren't just going to lay down and let you take it. You have to want it. You've got to earn the win. Now, it's up to you guys. I, we can sit here and draw some special play up, whatever, offense, defense, doesn't matter. This is what matters right now. You have to fight for this win. Let's go, guys. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. It's all on yourselves. It's all on yourselves right here. Don't lay down and die. Get up and fight. Get up and fight for the win. Let's go. Abby on three. One, two, three. Abby, let's go. You know, I, I remember us just getting high quality shots down the stretch and, and executing really well in a tight game basically. Whether we made them or missed them, that what we tried to do offensively, we, we, we got it to the right hands, we put it in the right areas, we attacked where we wanted to and then defensively we challenged them as well. by three and we had we had to score we had to do something coach said run you know just play and run well I, I was hit the ball on a low post we run it you know I got the ball uh, I get it back out got the ball back again to make good position, didn't really happen, you know. I spun on the baseline, I see Josh in the corner. Knew we were down by three, just dashing the ball with no help defense. You know, takes a shot. Goes in, brilliant shot. And they called a timeout, so we went back and my coach was just like, okay, this is a stop we need to get. You know, if you don't get the stop, you just foul immediately and make them shoot free throws. And I was just thinking, um, 
I, I really just know I can get a steal right now. I could just tell. I could just. Was, I could just feel it. I, I knew I could get a steal right now. Dwayne made it a lot easier for everyone else. You know, like quite quite happy he did it. To be honest with you, just got that cheeky little steal, little layup, up by two. You know, what's the play defense after that? Just seeing Greece get the steal, it was just, uh, it was, you know, I, was, I feel so, ha I was so happy that just the fact that we came in there and got a win. It was the greatest feeling for the whole trip. That was the best moment of the whole trip. Get, just getting the win and letting everyone know that we can play at this level. Getting the win in, in America against an American team and like the best like tournament in the States was like the greatest feeling ever. Come on guys, great job. Win feels a lot better. We have to work for it, doesn't it? You guys did a great job. You guys battled it out. You guys stuck together as a team, and you got the win. Great job, great job, guys. That's a tough team. It's one of the best ones in the state. All right, they got two guys that are going to be going to Division One. Again, you guys did a great job, not just individually, but as a team. You guys locked in, especially there in the second half. You guys focused on what we were trying to do as a team, and you guys accomplished it. And you got a win. Shouldn't I just talk, guys? You know, that's coming in today. I, I was a little worried. I thought it was a bit lethargic. It was a bit laid back. But we did a really, really good job of staying. You know, one things we talked about. Rebounding the ball better. We looked after it better in the second half. Winning every quarter. We stayed in the game. We got, you know, it was very similar to yesterday. We had 17 points and a half yesterday. We had 17 points and a half today. Difference today. We started to get more comfortable, more confident. Played really, really good basketball. Good job. Let's go, guys. Way to cap off, way to cap off. Way to finish it off strong, guys. Right. Okay. Hey, yeah. Merry Christmas to everyone. Right. Abby, one, two, three. Abby. I think the win, it, it meant a lot. Uh, because it showed that we belonged in, in that competition. To, to go out with a win, a 500 record at the City of the Palms was great. It showed that we have players and we're able to compete at, at the you know the elite high school level in in the states as well, um, so I, I think from a from a Barking Abbey perspective it was very good. Um, our reputation, people know that the same really. We, we can compete with that level. That we're comparable to teams that are sending you know three four guys to Division One schools, um, and then for the players, I thought it was fantastic for them to you know to have that belief or to to kind of. We want, you know, a lot of our players, a lot of English players, they'll sit and watch YouTube channels and they'll watch highlight mixtapes and, and things like that. They'll hear these names and for them to know that they're there or thereabouts and the work that they're doing every day here at Barking Abbey is, is helping them be on the level of those type of players, I think is a real, you know, real positive message for them because we've got good English players here. We have good English players throughout the country and I, I think that hopefully it, we're showing that we can compete and, and we're getting better. Um, on a yearly basis. Just probably the best basketball I've ever been on, to be honest with you. Well, definitely the best basketball I've ever been on, you know. Not only was there like great basketball, great quality of basketball, you know, but great people around you as well, so it made it a lot easier. It's just a, a great country, you know. The difference in me between like going to America and now is that I just realized how much like I want it and how much I want to do anything it takes to like achieve it and I want to get to like some of the schools that we are seeing and like being being in that situation like for the next like few years of my life it would just be amazing. I, I would just say it was the best trip I've been on so far in my life. Like the people I was with, the coaches. The stuff we did outside of basketball. Uh, the trip in a whole was amazing. That's probably the best word to describe it. Uh, you know, 
some of these guys I've only met this year and to spend uh, 10 days in the States with them was, was brilliant, let alone all the, uh, the, the amazing basketball we played and the top level stuff we got to see. You know, we had great fun, got to, got to see so much, we experienced a whole different kind of culture and uh, yeah, it was definitely one of, one of the best trips I've been on so far in my career anyway, so yeah, brilliant. It made me really excited for the future and uh, I think it did that for every, I think it did that for everyone. Just the fact that we got to see all these colleges, we got to see the, uh, the competition we're going to be up against and yeah, it just made us really excited for the future. It was, it was possibly one of the best trips I've been on just because it sort of opened my eyes and made me realise, you know, you know, the future's coming fast and you need to get ready for it.